Have you ever wondered what really happens to your body after death? Not in a spooky way, but through the lens of science and tradition? Cremation, chosen by over half of Americans today, isn't the dramatic burning you might imagine from movies. It's a precise, two-hour process that turns a body into just a few pounds of fine ashes. But how does it work, step by step? In this video, we'll explore the fascinating biology and technology behind it, so you can satisfy that curiosity about one of life's final mysteries. Let's dive in respectfully and learn together. Cremation has been around for thousands of years. Ancient Romans used it for honored farewells, and today it's a practical, eco-conscious choice that's surging in popularity. At its core, it's about reducing the body to its mineral essence through intense heat, leaving behind bone fragments that are gently processed. No flames lick the body. It's all about controlled, radiant energy. We'll break it down into three key phases. Preparation, the transformation inside the chamber, and what comes next. Think of it like a high-tech oven for respectful closure. Before anything heats up, there's careful preparation to ensure dignity and safety. After death, the body arrives at a licensed crematory, a facility designed for this exact purpose. It's identified with tags and paperwork, like a final check-in, to prevent any mix-ups. Next, any medical devices like pacemakers are removed. Batteries could cause small pops, so safety first. The body is placed in a simple, combustible container, often wood or cardboard, which burns away too. Embalming isn't necessary, but if it's been done for a viewing, it doesn't change much. This phase takes just minutes, but it's crucial. It honors the person while prepping for the science ahead. A fun historical note. In Victorian times, cremation was controversial, but pioneers like Dr. Francis Wenham advocated for it as a clean alternative to burial. Today, regulations ensure it's ethical, one body at a time, with witnesses if requested. Now that everything's ready, let's enter the heart of the process. The chamber or retort is a sturdy, brick-lined oven preheated to between 1400 and 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than molten lava in some volcanoes. Powered by natural gas, it creates an oxygen-rich environment for efficient breakdown. The entire process lasts 1.5 to 3 hours, depending on the body's size. Step 1. In the first 20-30 minutes, soft tissues like skin, muscles, and organs start to vaporize. Enzymes and bacteria from the body's own decomposition, remember autolysis from biology class, combine with the heat, turning water content, about 60% of your body, into steam that vents safely through a filtered chimney. It's like the body releasing its final breath as gases. By the 45-minute mark, the torso and limbs are mostly oxidized, leaving the denser bones behind. Bones don't burn. They calcify, turning brittle and cracking from the expansion. Think of popcorn kernels under pressure. The skull might fracture naturally, but everything happens quietly, without the Hollywood explosions. Why bones last? They're packed with calcium phosphate, a heat-resistant mineral. Imagine a modern example a family choosing cremation for their loved one after a long life. As the chamber hums, it's a moment of quiet transformation, reducing 150 pounds of a person to about 5 to 7 pounds of fragments. Scientists at places like the University of Tennessee study this to improve the process, ensuring minimal environmental impact. As the timer winds down, the chamber cools, and we're left with what's essential. Once cooled, the remains mostly bone fragments the size of pebbles, are carefully raked out. Any metals, like dental fillings or jewelry, if not removed, are separated with magnets and recycled responsibly. These fragments, weighing three to nine pounds, are then placed in a cremulator, a machine that gently pulverizes them into fine, sand-like particles called cremains. Cremains are about 95% bone minerals, calcium, sodium, and phosphorus, with no DNA or organic matter left. They're inert, like fine gravel, and return to the family in an urn within a day or two. From there, choices abound. Scatter them in a meaningful place, 
with legal permits, bury in a niche, or even turn them into memorial jewelry. Environmentally, modern crematories filter emissions, making it greener than you might think. Though alternatives like aquamation, water-based, are emerging for even less energy use, the key takeaway? Cremation is a blend of ancient ritual and modern science, offering closure while respecting the body's natural elements. We've uncovered the step-by-step -step science of cremation, from preparation to those final meaningful cremains, and it's a reminder that even in endings, there's fascinating biology at play. Whether for personal planning or pure curiosity, understanding this empowers us to make informed choices about life and legacy. If this sparked your interest in the wonders of the human body, smash that like button. It helps more learners discover these facts. In the comments, share your thoughts. Would you choose cremation or do you prefer burial? I love hearing your stories and might shout one out next time. Share this video with a friend pondering end-of-life options. They'll appreciate the knowledge. And if you're collecting more curiosity gems, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on our series exploring health, science, and mysteries. What's next? Tell me below. Thanks for joining the learning journey. Stay curious.